I welcome everyone for today's webinar, which is hosted by Food and Drink Processing Expo. Thank you for joining us for today's session, which is about demand for baked snacks in the growing Indian market. I would like to introduce the founder of Tech Poster and is an alumnus of IIM Lucknow. Holding a business management degree and an engineering degree in food technology, he has worked for organizations like Baikal, ITC Limited, Olam International in his career. His entrepreneurial journey took off in 2011. Since then, TechForcer has helped many in terms of professional business consulting. Now, I request Mr. Hitesh Tripathi to take over the session. Welcome, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as uh, welcomed by the Food and Drink Processing Expo, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, giving me a platform to uh, explain and brief on the very demanding uh, subject today, demand for healthy baked snacks in the growing Indian market. So, uh, Let us first start with the introduction to snacks. What is a snack? Snack is broadly defined as a small service of food, which is consumed not as a proper meal, but in between meals. Snacks include both the ones prepared at home or the processed and packaged ones. So it's actually midday uh, meal cravings between the meals. Snack meals designed to be quick filling, less perishable, more durable, and more portable than prepared foods. Sweeteners, preservatives, and enticing components like chocolate, nuts, and special desserts frequently found in them, such as flavored potato chips, which is which is our very one-time favorite uh, snack uh, in the form of various brands being already sold in the Indian market. Baked snacks, as the name implies, are the snacks that are created through the baking process. The most common item that springs to the mind when we hear the phrase baked snacks is bread. However, there are many other items that fall into this category. Snack categories are like bars, breads, bagels, buns, rolls, and loaf breads, biscuits, cookies, rusk, crackers, patties, puffs, deserts. Deserts include cakes, pastries, cheesecakes, brownie and pies, muffins, pizza, snack cakes, sweet goods, donuts, danish, sweet rolls, cinnamon rolls, and coffee cake, tortillas, etc. So this is a long variety of snacks which is available in the, uh, in the market, uh, meeting to the hunger requirements, and they fall into the category of baked. Uh, impact of COVID-19 or bakery industry. Unlike most industries, the bakery industry seems to have gained from the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic led to a rise in demand for healthy and functional bakery items like those which consist of multigrain nuts and other healthy ingredients uh, for example we saw the growth and rise of uh, breads which was uh, having turmeric which was having uh, uh, ingredients to boost the immunity this is so because it has been seen that people suffering from lifestyle diseases such as diabetes high blood pressure and obesity are more prone to the deadly infection. At the other end, the pandemic has paved the way for a clean and hygienic environment inside the factories too. Proper maintenance of machine hygiene control are important factors in the production of bakery products. So suddenly, uh, if we see, if we analyze that the growth of health-driven products has increased the demand of clean label, the demand of uh, nutritional nutrition-based foods has has been growing up over the last couple of years opportunities for baked snacks in india growing population and rising income levels along with smaller families leading busier urban lives and less time to spend on cooking or shopping the indian food sector has one of the strongest growth fundamentals of any industry snack foods have been long time favorite in the indian diet and now packaged and branded variants of namkeen sweets and wafers help to satiate culinary cravings induced by the modern indian lifestyle also the indian market is observing the establishment of bakery cafe chains in the form of barista cafe coffee day and monjini consumers we bake a view bakery items as affordable convenient and easy to purchase driven by health concerns globally there is a robust demand of nutritionally rich and gluten-free baked products. So uh, this, this is the new industry. This is the new normal where 
people are consuming their all time favorite foods all time favorite snacks but in a newer version which is which is nutritionally more enriched which is uh, at times uh, gluten free at times uh, vegan uh, at times uh, sugar free so uh, this is the new upcoming trend trends in the baked, baked industry the movement towards healthier bakery offers offerings has become so widespread that not only new bakeries are being scrutinized for lighter options even traditional bakeries are now introducing innovative goods to meet the increased demand for healthier foods so i'll be discussing a lot of trends which have been observed over the last couple of years uh, trend one is reduced sugar trend reducing the amount of sugar in bakery fillings may help industrial bakeries capitalize on the global health and wellness trend now uh, this has been observed and uh, approached and appreciated even by the multinational giants uh, in the future slides i'll explain or i will demonstrate how the big brands have uh, promised to reduce their sugar consumption levels in their various products trend 2 longer shelf life and frozen bakery pro products due to the busy schedule or fear of corona virus consumers are attempting to save down on their travels to the supermarket and bread products are among the item that people keep like to keep on hand in case supply runs out as a result items with a longer shelf life are becoming more popular uh, we see in our uh, i mean despite uh, i mean i would say thanks that covid is now getting uh, shortened and shortened and uh, the, the waves are are now not not expected anymore but still the busy lifestyles they uh, force consumers to store products which are easy to consume faster uh, uh, to to uh, you know to uh, accept in the in the fast moving lifestyles trend 3 enhanced nutrition in baked goods healthy breads and cake alternatives with high fiber protein and fruit content are another trend in the bakery business that supports the enormous health awareness movement manufacturers are being beginning to hunt for more nutrient dense products from the suppliers trend 4 the plant based diet plant based and vegan diets are becoming more popular among the consumers the flexitarian diet is an eating approach that emphasizes plant based foods while allowing animal items in moderation so uh, this is which has been observed more in the west and slowly it has been incorporated or being adopted into the indian culture is the vegan or the plant based movement where it is also considered more planet friendly more animal friendly uh, flavors that boost the immune system according to innova market insights 2021 45% of worldwide consumers consume immune boosting food and beverage products there is an increase in ginger turmeric and citrus components in baked goods being released in various places around the world these chemicals are known for their health benefits which aligns with customer concerns about their health so this is something which is catching on to the requirement where we are uh, utilizing immune system boosting uh, ingredients into the baked uh, products uh, enhancing their nutrition value hybrid baked products this is the sixth trend which we have observed in the past years hybrid baked goods like the donut crow donut pastry and cruffin a hybrid of a crozo and a muffin has been the show stoppers now many type of hybrid has risen to prominence industries are also experimental with high protein chocolate and plant based chocolate products to meet these growing global consumer trends so uh, basically the idea is to fuse two of the regular polar products into a new fused fused version or a new fusion uh, food which already has a existing demand so that way uh, there is a innovative product uh, it's it's a it's a trend setting uh, product or a innovative product and also it it already has a acceptance you don't have to educate people on on that particular product uh, now as we see uh, the indian snack market this is the uh, the current uh, share where biscuits uh, lead the uh, the total market share bread cakes and pastries and rusks are the rest of the products so as breads and biscuits are fast moving consumer goods they are consumed on daily basis by the consumers which increases the sales of these products in india major share of bakery market in india is taken by biscuits nearly 60% and the bread accounts for 20% of the indian bakery market followed by cakes and pastries and rusks 
which is 10% market share for each. Although uh, these numbers are growing and these are official numbers, there are a lot of players who are local unorganized. So uh, I would say that the growth or the numbers is, is still bigger in the, in the Indian snack market uh, compared to what has been observed. The bakery industry in India is the largest of the food processing segments with an estimated annual turnover of 7.6 billion US dollar which is approximately 58,000 crores in 2020. The market is further estimated to grow at a CAGR of 8.5% between 2021 and 2026 to reach a value of 12.39 billion US dollars, which is 95,000 crores by 2026. So this is the estimated growth, which is being speculated in the Indian bakery industry. The growth and spread of the bakery market is largely driven by a thriving biscuits and cookies industry. The biscuits and cookies industry account for nearly 72% of the sales in the Indian bakery market. The penetration of cookies and biscuits in both the urban and the rural market is increasing owing to their affordable price and ready to eat nature. According to a recent survey, the bakery business in India is growing at the rate of above 9%. In actuality, there are over a million organized small scale bakeries and over 2000 organized or semi organized bakeries in India. As I mentioned that every nook and corner of the country has a bakery business growing and this contributes to the overall uh, growth of the bakery business. The cake market is forecasted to reach 882.4 million US dollars, which is 6.8 thousand crores by 2024, growing at an annual compound rate of 12.5% during 2019 to 2024. So as we see, cake is another convenient product, uh, convenience food, which is which can be uh, used, stored, uh, traveled along with, and consumed in small pockets. So uh, the market for that is definitely uh, speculated to grow. Here, I'm just demonstrating few of the uh, snack market players. Uh, Pale, Britannia, ITC, Priya Gold, Cadbury, Unmol, Unibic Cookies. We all know these brands, but but just for a recollection of what we might have seen as a part of the baked snack industry, Dukes, Bisque Farm, Kremika, Patanjali, Bon, Harvest Gold, Monginis, Winkies, English Oven, Perfect, Haldirams, Jubilant, and Devyani. Challenges faced by baked snacks in India. Demand supply chain. This is one of the biggest uh, challenge or I would say this is one of the biggest uh, hurdle to take care of when you get into a, a big snack industry. Price sensitivity of the market, rising prices of flour, the major ingredient and other raw materials such as oil, fat, eggs, etc. So this is the second challenge, which probably I think everyone who's in the industry would be able to correlate that how the prices of the raw materials have shot up over the last couple of years, I would say almost by 30%, but uh, the same has not reflected into the, uh, the selling price or the MRP of the product. So this industry is fa facing a, a challenge in the current price sensitivity of the market. And I believe this situation uh, is, is going to settle down in next uh, quarter or so where the either the ingredient prices will come down or the final product prices has to be raised. Uh, we have seen Amul raising the prices of milk, milk being such a primary ingredient. And uh, uh, when the major giants have started to increase the price of the product, obviously it will affect the profitability and the growth of the businesses of the other small players as well. Meeting the new age demands, for example, to meet the demand of healthier food, bakery store or shop need to invest in making the facilities more hygienic and also hiring new people with knowledge of such products. So uh, I also believe that the human, resor human resources or the manpower quality of the industry has to increase. Uh, we have to incorporate more educated uh, people who understand better uh, in terms of quality, in terms of hygiene, in terms of product development. Uh, this will actually uh, help everyone suffice the, uh, the requirement to meet the demand. Innovating new products is another big challenge for the industry in view of increasing competition in the market. The increase in demand for fortified items, which include fiber, antioxidants, omega-3 oils, vitamins, and mineral fortification also pose challenges for the industry. 
uh, as i mentioned that now the consumer is more aware the consumer is looking behind the packet of a food product to check what are the ingredients what kind of preservatives are used what kind of chemicals are used is it a clean label how healthy uh, is the nutritional content of the uh, the food product so this is a challenge which the industry is is facing and is going to face even further uh, because the contribution of healthier products or healthier ingredients is going to increase a competent expert consultant for implementing the food safety and hygiene requirements prescribed in the country's food laws so this is something which is also required uh, industries they uh, usually the unorganized or the small scale industries they don't follow the food safety and hygiene uh, requirements leading to uh, leading to issues related to uh, the statutory and the government bodies and also to the product quality end of the day resulting uh, a, a loss of consumer uh, acceptance of the product there is also need to increase awareness about the digital technologies and convenience of social media platforms that can help bakeries in the unorganized sector reach a wider market so uh, uh, an awareness or an education where uh, the bakeries or the small bakers or the small uh, business owners uh, they can get accustomed to using of the latest uh, technologies to reach out to the maximum audience because nowadays uh, a lot of business happens over the social media or through e-commerce and if a, a small player can reach to that if he can he or she can increase their uh, the radius or their customer uh, presence by a very large number uh, with a very minimal uh, investment uh, there is a limited acceptance of options such as health bars makhanas roasted puffs and millets brands in this space are constantly trying to push these new categories for a long time while disregarding consumer taste preferences completely so uh, this is a challenge uh, where the healthy options are being not so widely accepted uh, i would say uh, price point and the taste would be two contributing factors because indian consumer is very particular about the product which he is consuming and they don't want a taste deviation so so anything which is healthy yet tasty is is more accepted and the price bracket means a lot in the in terms of the mass consumer historically the indian consumers has strongly preferred taste led snack categories such as potato chips extruded snacks chocolates and cookies hence it makes more sense to give consumers healthier options in these categories rather than expecting them to change their preferences so this is what i suggest i mean obviously uh, if you if the masses has to be catered then the education of the masses either has to happen through big giants where they can invest a lot into the advertising and educating the consumer or for a small player it is better to go in a existing uh, category uh, upgrading the product with with better ingredients and better taste the need of an r is to innovate using global advances in food technology and provide the consumer with better for you chips chocolates and cookies so as we see that there is a globalization and there is a upgradation of every industry so is for the food industry there are there are better ingredients there are better technologies to process to pack uh, and and this is probably required at the root level to adopt these technologies to bring out the best product for the consumers need of healthy snacks in india the consumption consumption of the snacks has increased and will remain increase around 85% of the consumers feel the need for healthy snack options with no added additives and preservatives wills hunger and energy were the key drivers for snacking pre pandemic now it's search for comfort and stress best busting benefits covid-19 has truly played a huge role in our shift in snacking preferences the demand for healthy products have increased however immunity boosting ingredients are not being utilized to a large extent the demand is for multigrain offerings providing a rich source of vitamin calcium proteins and iron consumers view bakery items as affordable convenient and easy to purchase driven by health concerns globally there is a robust demand for nutritionally rich and gluten free baked products the industry has taken an organic turn with rising obesity and diabetes 
as well as growing interest in unconventional sweet eats, organic bakery has witnessed a surge in popularity. Big FMCG players step in healthy snacking. As I said, uh, until and unless the big giants, the big players, they don't get into this industry and make the category popular, it will be difficult for the smaller players to create a vibe or to create volumes. They might be able to create a niche clientele, which is which is uh, more on, on personal contact or a regional level driven. But then the big players will be able to contribute and make this as a successful new vertical or a new category itself. As per Economic Times report, Nestle committed to cut salt by 10%, sugar by 6%, and fat by 2.5% by 2022, whereas Britannia stated it would reduce sugar by 5% every year. Uh, this I would see personally as a food technologist as a very healthy sign where we are moving toward, towards healthy ingredients and guilt-free food consumption. In fact, Britannia has removed trans fats from all its products in 2018 and had launched 50 new products in an attempt to add healthier snacks to its basket. Mayang Shah, Palais product category head stated, the trend of clean label is catching up in India. While snack consumers are getting more health conscious, taste still remains numero uno consideration. But a good development over the last few years is that consumers are increasingly looking at labels and are avoiding nasties like preservatives and additives. So this is this is what has been observed by everyone who is probably in the industry. Uh, we as consulting company are also observing this. We are getting a lot of queries from people looking to develop products which are healthier, which are more nutrition, uh, nutrition based and uh, more clean label. Dabur partnered with Tetra Pak to launch India's first low calorie juice under the brand Real Active, as well as 100% natural, unfiltered, unpasteurized and undiluted apple cider vinegar along with the same time last year. As a direct competitor to our own very old loved Maggie, Mariko forayed into instant noodles with safola oodles with the packaging bolding out to no maida. So uh, this again is a, a initiative by Safola uh, to, to bring out uh, guilt free or better ingredient food. Here I would like to, uh, I mean, uh, categorize or do a case study on two yum because the moment we talk about uh, baked snack, the first product which comes into the mind is uh, two yum reason. It has been advertised and it has been marketed in, in such a manner that people are able to correlate to this category very, very quickly. So 2YAM positions itself as a tasty snack that can be eaten guilt-free. While studying the different types of consumers, 2YAM realized that the young and the middle-aged customers, 15 to 35 years of age, from larger cities were becoming health conscious. These folks were trying to avoid fried food or at least pretending to, joining gyms and worried about their increasing waistline. However, 2YAM was not the first one to realize this. Some major brands also brought baked snacks but failed. Uh, for example, Lay's. They had the distribution muscle of Pepsi and an established brand name promoted itself, highlighting it had 65% less fat, failed as well because of the bland taste in the product. Hippo had the distribution muscle of Parley, they managed to create a buzz initially with stores running out of stock, but demand fizzled out with time as the waste was, as the taste was not, not good enough like regular snacks. Safola Zest was launched as a healthy snack which could help manage cholesterol. It was withdrawn in 2010. The failure indicates that the claim was too far stretched. Also, they failed to deliver on taste. Challenges faced. The biggest challenge to overcome was perception that healthy cannot be tasty. Early on, they started with premium pricing and modern trade distribution, which changed when they moved to the new categories. Case study again continued to your market strategy, why it worked. Variety of products. They have not launched baked potato chips. The products launched at the beginning like wheat thins and fox nuts were only popular in certain parts of the country and not countrywide. Brands tra traction started with launch of mainstream product like veggie sticks and latest in the line is karare, karake. 
celebrity endorsement roping in virat kohli as the face of the brand exactly at the time when virat ended its endorsement agreement with pepsico citing he won't promote things which he won't consume himself created a buzz and made the brand stand out reducing price point and selling product in small packs the product was launched at higher price points and in large packs whereas the market research shows that indian snacking market is dominated by 5 and 10 rupee packs the company launched the 5 rupee pack starting with karake to enter to metros and upcoming market. disruptive marketing ideas the company was actively promoting brand in social media using hashtag, hashtags like hashtag foxtrail friday and hashtag why chips virat marketing plan 2019 2020 has also adopted brand building via sports and is actively using pm modi's fit india movement to promote the product india's most valued sports person being the brand face further help the company to make big and from this fit india movement campaign switching from digital to tv as its main advertising medium in the beginning 2m was using digital media to advertise the product but since the target consumer category is very wide and diverse digital media alone cannot uh, alone didn't gather enough traffic this led to advertising on tv to generate buzz about the new product uh, here uh, we have enlisted a few of the potential healthy snack food in the in the market and this category uh, would would grow according to us uh, this category is is going to grow in the next 3 uh, 4 years pop chips which is neither fried nor baked uh, tags is one of the brands uh, we have seen this brand even in the shark tank recently unbelievable buns vegan buns so vegan again uh, buns which are which are plant based gluten free whole grain multi grain breads sugar free gluten free high protein millet based cookies super food based healthy baked snacks baked chips crackers with omega 3s antioxidants and fiber need of the r protein fortified feed uh, food the indian council of medical research icmr recommends that an average adult should consume about 1 gram of protein per kg of body weight every day but the reality indicates otherwise the indian market research research bureau suggests that protein deficiency in indians is more than 80% and as per the recent national sample survey india has a declining per capita protein consumption in both urban and rural areas there is also a prevalent myth that a basic meal comprising of dal roti and rice is enough to meet the daily requirements of protein both plant and animal based foods which are high in protein content also remained unidentified this is a cause of concern specifically in india where a majority of the population follow either a vegetarian or a flexitarian diet even even plant based sources of protein go unnoticed therefore in the country like india and other developing countries where protein and caloric malnutrition are prevalent there is a need of high protein food for the masses and that too in at a reasonable cost so we have to uh, modify or fortify the the food with protein and here uh, there is a product biscuit cookies and breads are consumed extensively as a snack food and on a large scale due to the unique taste and easy availability at a reasonable cost in developing countries this is a big opportunity to the bakery industry where they can innovate their product with infusion of proteins and call can solve the nation wide uh, issue of protein deficiency in diet and malnutrition in the population gladful is another brand it's a bakery brand which provide protein rich bakery products to its consumers and uh, i can proudly say gladful is powered by uh, tech for sir here uh, for the for the young entrepreneurs or for the people who are looking to uh, get into a healthy snack business uh, we have given a small route chart on on or small checklist what you have to do or what you have to follow to get into a successful uh, business uh, so these are some of the key points which you should uh, note down so company formation uh, product selection standardizing formulations uh, product costing assuring quality standards raw material sourcing finalizing packaging packing material sourcing assuring packaging and label regu- re- labeling regulations finalizing on process technology site development plant machinery procurement manpower recruitment trial runs branding and marketing i would explain these a little bit more in detail for the for the new entrepreneurs or for the 
for the first gen entrepreneurs. So uh, first of all, we need a company to be formed, uh, either a proprietary based company or a private limited or a LLP. Uh, you have to identify a product, what product you have to manufacture, you would like to manufacture. So that way it, it helps you freeze down on a particular category, standardizing formulations. So this is uh, before you invest big time into anything, better get into a product development, formulate your product, and standardize the product, I would also suggest that you do a small test marketing where you get the samples being tested by uh, not just the family members, but outside the family who are who are the real critic of the product. Uh, then once you are through with the product standardization, finalize on the product costing so that you know what is your target price and will you be able to match to the market demands if not, there are various ideas where you can do that. For example, you can reduce your pack size to meet, meet to the specific target price point, uh, assuring quality standards. So, uh, so before you formulate again into the, uh, the, the factory, make sure what quality parameters you are going to follow and how are you going to, uh, to attain them raw material sourcing. So you have to find out good sources, reliable sources and uh, sources uh, which which can help you better sourcing of the raw material so that your prices and cost of operation is is uh, optimum finalize on the packaging uh, what kind of packaging you want to develop uh, and uh, and uh, how the product will look and feel uh, packaging material sourcing uh, assuring packing and labeling regulation regulations this is very very important uh, what you mentioned on the pack has to be properly uh, checked and as per the guidelines of uh, FSSAI. Finalizing on processing technology, uh, as in what technology you are going to adopt to make your product. So this is uh, more required in terms of setting up of the factory and selection of the equipment uh, for developing the products which you are looking to get into. Site development. Uh, so this is the land and the building development of your factory premises, plant machinery procurement uh, and installation, manpower recruitment. Again, a very, very important step uh, because the kind of people you hire are the kind of people who represent your brand and then finally are responsible for the product quality in the at, at the consumer level. Trial runs uh, before you start uh, packing the product for the consumer, uh, it's always advised that you do trial runs and, and do trial sampling again, branding and marketing, uh, the next very important step where you know that uh, how uh, you are able to create awareness or uh, create a consumer base for yourself. Uh, I can say uh, we as tech for serve uh, contribute in all the above uh, steps. So, uh, so this is uh, what about the snack food business or the snack food industry from from my side i am open for uh, questions and answers thank you so much we can move on to the q and a session so first uh, question it's it's from can you suggest an indian based healthy snack for a wider market uh, so she wants to know a brand name or uh, 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 what can be done uh, i am a little unclear on the question she wants to understand an existing player or she wants to develop something. Uh, she has asked, like, uh, can you suggest an Indian-based healthy snack for wider market? Just maybe it, it can be a brand. Nevertheless, uh, I mean, it can be it can be both the categories. For the wider market, you can have products. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the pop chips uh, can be one uh, with with the ingredient in, uh, Indian ingredients, and you can also have healthier. Uh, okay, she has mentioned development of product. So uh, I would say chips is a category. Uh, cookies is a category where you can use Indian based uh, ingredients and uh, promote the product. Any other questions? Millet based products can be made. It's asked by Mr. Triboj Kaur Bajwa. Yes. Uh, so millet is something uh, the government and the big industries, they are working hugely on, on uh, millet. I, I think uh, over the last uh, couple of months when uh, there was a delegation in, in uh, Dubai Expo 2020. Uh, there has been a lot of revelations about uh, the Indian giants contributing to the millet-based uh, programs and also the Indian food processing industry uh, ministry is promoting millet. So uh, millet is something which is to look upon as a major ingredient for the future. 
So uh, there is a question from Mr. Rajan Matthew for bakery chain. How we can make differentiate and unique product range? I mean, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, you can what you can do is you can make a fusion fusion product. So uh, for an existing product, you can uh, uh, you can use ingredients which are uh, different, and the look and feel of the product can be uh, similar to what people are uh, you know consuming. So that way you have an acceptance of the product because it looks like of what something some people have been already consuming, but ingredient and taste wise, it is different. So could you elaborate on how we can go about on costing of the product? Well, uh, this is, there is a process of uh, calculation of the costing, which includes uh, your raw material price. That is first. I mean, once you formulate a recipe, you calculate all the ingredients used in the recipe and then calculate the price of the ingredient per batch, maybe per kg or per batch or um, or the pack size of the product which you are willing to uh, proposing to sell. That is one. Second is the cost of the manpower or the human resources which you uh, which you propose to employ. For example, there if there is a factory uh, uh, pegged to produce one ton a day, then you can figure out what kind of a manpower you would require to to manufacture one ton capacity and that that manpower cost also gets added to the product cost then you add the packaging cost then you add the conversion cost of consumables like electricity diesel transportation all those things also gets added so this becomes the cost at the factory level then you add taxes and and then uh, then your margins so so this is how the costing uh, is calculated it's a it's a, a little bit complicated method, but uh, can be done under supervision. So he wants to know the training center. Is there any training center available in Hyderabad for millet based products? Sir? I'm not too sure. I am. I am not too sure, but I think there would be there would be somebody who is doing this okay. or at least you can reach out to uh, various colleges who are uh, conducting food technology programs. So probably you might be able to uh, to get information about this. OK, sir. Uh, next question is from Mr. Ms. Srishti Saroj. Why is spirulina, which is a super food, still not considered to, to make uh, a snack? I mean, I would say uh, it's it's uh, uh, somebody who has not taken an initiative on this product. So that's why, I, I particularly, I don't see a reason why it has not been considered to make as a snack. But it's it's probably the initiative or the product development which is missing. And if somebody takes the initiative or takes the lead, there could be something developed from this for sure. Our next question is from uh, Mr. Ramachandran. How we can make maize-based baked snacks with different masalas? Uh, I mean, you can have maize-based uh, maize based extruded snacks. You can have baked snacks. And uh, I mean, there is a process of uh, developing a product where you first identify a prototype, uh, develop a recipe, do the trials reach to a product and then do the market sampling you might be required to do uh, fine tune on the on the samples required further so so there is a process which is followed for product development and uh, we can discuss this uh, in detail offline as well what would be the average cost of setting a plant or to start what would be the volume uh, this is a very uh, a very vague question because uh, it depends on what is the size of the market you are going to feed so if you want to do a retail uh, store, uh, the, the capex would be different. If you want to do mass production, the, um, the capex would be different. If you want to do a home-based uh, kitchen, the capex would be different. So we have to first identify what is the size of the market, which one wants to cater to, and then what is the uh, volume which one wants to uh, produce every day. Uh, that way we'll be able to calculate capex or the cost. Okay, sir. The next question is from Mr. Rajan Matthew. For any bakery production, what what would be the uh, bare minimum capacity to start for a commercial feasible to market in rural or semi-urban market? Project cost would be involved. It, it's a really very big question. For for a commercial uh, uh, level market, I first recommend that you do a detailed feasibility study, uh, make a detailed project report on what you're going to manufacture, what is the market size, uh, uh, and that project report helps you to formulate to a, to a complete business plan and reaching to the uh, required amount of capex and capacity. 
So first step uh, should be developing a detailed project report after identification of the product. What are some of the superfoods that can be worked around? So uh, millet is one, ragi is one, amaranth is one, uh, makhana is already being used, fox nuts as, as uh, it's already being uh, used in a lot of places. You have flax seeds, you have uh, quinoa. So there are there are a lot of lot of uh, superfoods which are now getting popularity. Uh, uh, it's 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 how innovative are we in terms of the product design and product formulation that would lead to a uh, you know something which is scalable. How do you enter into the export business of such healthy uh, yet tasty products? And how do we identify and target the market? So uh, for entering into the export business, first the product, the formulation, the packaging, everything has to be ready. I would suggest uh, you should have a little bit of a local market, little bit of a lo local reach as well uh, before you jump into the export market. And then you can advertise your product through various uh, channels uh, into the international market. There are exhibitions happening where you can demonstrate your product. And then uh, this is how you gradually grow. But uh, directly import, uh, directly export driven business is, is um, uh, would be slightly risky because you don't know uh, is your product being actually accepted or being uh, actually appreciated by the masses. And uh, there has to be a little bit of uh, research driven, driven uh, study on the target market which you're going to, to enter into. What are the healthier alternatives in extruded market? Extruded snacks uh, uh, currently is is mostly corn or maida based. Uh, we can have uh, again millets. We can have ragi. We can have uh, uh, healthier ingredients in the extruded formulation, and uh, with uh, with better seasoning, it can be developed as a product which can be more accepted. Thank you so much.